I wasn't cold, but I was shivering when I walked onto the Clayton Road overpass. I wasn't scared either. Even when I climbed over the rail, I didn't feel much of anything. I looked at the road below. It was a long way down. I focused on the spot where I would probably land, between the white lines and the brown gravel. I wondered if it would hurt or if I would die straight away. Then I wondered who would find me. Maybe it would be a truck driver or a shift worker. I felt bad for them. This book doesn't start with a suicide attempt. It starts with two suicide attempts. It's an unlikely way of Sam and Vic meeting, and it's a weird friendship. Sam is a 14-year-old runaway, and Vic is a 70-year-old Vietnam vet. It's a really unlikely friendship. The focus on this novel, the thing that you should take away from this novel, rightly should be Sam's exploration of their gender. Sam desires to see drag queens, desires to wear dresses, desires to have long hair. Sam loves Julia Child and comes from a very broken home. Vic, on the other hand, is a widower and a very cisgendered man who is 60 years older than Sam. And they somehow find themselves living together after this joint suicide attempt gone wrong. One of Vic's neighbours has a family which includes a 15-year-old girl, Aggie, who is half Scottish, half Sri Lankan. And her and Sam's friendship is so genuine and so lovely. And they are so different people. Aggie is this nerdy girl. Aggie is, well, like, I know I'm unbearably obnoxious at home, but I'm actually pretty shy out there. I'm like this chubby, quiet brown girl who is decent academically, but who never risks venturing an opinion. It's weird because, like, in a world full of frost giants and dwarves and demons and spell casting, my fantasies were really about being a confident, decisive person who had their shit together and was listened to. Aggie is a cool character. She is into Dungeons and Dragons and eating Sam's cooking and just generally talking the shit. She is a bright spark in this book. As too is the drag queen Fella Fitzgerald, who forms an unlikely friendship with Sam as well. This book is full of unlikely friendships. But there is a dark past. Sam has run away from their mum, their stepdad, and everything that that means. Now, while we focus on Sam, it's important to focus on Vic, because Vic has been through some stuff too. And this is the part of the book that I really related to, because the character of Vic really hit me somewhere that I did not expect to be hit. Vic lost his mechanics business because of his business partner scamming him, leaving him with lots of debt and the likelihood of losing his business. Vic's dealings with the bank afterwards are quite uncomfortable, as you can imagine. It's generally a bit of a horrible situation. And from a personal point of view, it's something that I relate to. I have gone through something very similar myself, the loss of a very good friend for doing something quite similar to this. That made me feel uncomfortable in a way that I just didn't expect to feel uncomfortable from this book. And that really elevated the experience for me. Obviously, there's themes of gender identity in this book, as well as themes of suicide. But there are also some other really cool themes in there. What Craig Sylvie is saying about money and banks and society and loans and the, the value of money as a status symbol in this society is something that I just absolutely loved. The questioning of gender is also lovely and brilliant and the belonging and the found family aspect of this is great. Sylvie really acknowledges the way girls are treated by young boys, especially as they're going through puberty and developing and the boys are a bit shit and they don't know how to treat the girls as not objects really. And what that would feel like if, if you were a young girl, that's wonderful. But also the use of Sex as a form of value is discussed in this. Sylvie really sees a lot in this, and it is a very multi-layered book. There are two things that I'll say that are slightly negative about this book from a personal point of view. Firstly, when I heard Clayton Road Overpass, I thought that this was actually right in my backyard. And when it was later quite obvious that this was based in the city of Perth, I was a bit disappointed that... Uh, I didn't get something 
most of the books in Melbourne tend to be from a part of Melbourne that I am not from. I did find a couple of negative reviews online from uh, non-binary and trans people suggesting that Sylvie as a cisgendered man is coercing trans trauma as a way of making money. So I just wanted to, as a, as a cis man, it's nothing for me to say about that. And it's something that I only realised after I finished it. I did want to flag it in case that, that is something that you care about. Um, this is an incredibly competent book. I think that it is a multi-layered. I think the writing is good. I think it's got great characters. I think Sylvie has done his research. I think it's got a little bit of humour in there. I think it reads quickly and well. I just think it's a great book that I would have given five stars anyway. But in seeing the representation of something that is not a particularly happy memory in my life there on paper and to be seen is something that I've not I've not had that happen before and that that was really quite confronting and that elevated this book way above the five stars for me this is easily the best Australian book that I have ever read and I'm going to say that this is the best book I have read this decade if you like this book I'm going to recommend two very different books for you to to go on with the first one is uh, Tori Peter's Detransition Baby, which is a wonderful book by a trans woman, which talks about all trans issues that are covered in this book, as well as a lot more. And I, and I think it's much better at those sort of details. The other book I'm going to recommend is, is just simply because it's another example of a similar style of book done really well. And that's Ruth Ozeki's My Year of Meats which is a, a wonderful book, multi-layered, dealing with lots of stuff that is just well done. Personally, I'm going to go on with Jasper Jones. That's the book that Craig Sylvie is better known for. It's been a decade in between these two books without anything else. So I'm really looking forward to this one because this one is good.